Hello, this is Leslie Sansone Williams coming to you today from Paralegal Coffee Talk on Facebook, LeslieSansoneWilliams.com, and that's the website. The podcast called Cast Now, that's the app, C A S T N O W. Um, look for it on Google Play, it's a purple icon, and then you can find my uh, Paralegal Coffee Talk. Uh, podcast or under my name Leslie Sansone Williams and then if you're not watching this video on YouTube go to my channel Leslie Williams 126 and check out the other videos there and listed below is uh, a link that you where you can check out my book legal break-in that I wrote just for you so today's topic is how to become a paralegal the requirements to become a paralegal we tend to think and I get this question all the time. Do I need to be certified? Do I need to get a certificate? Do I need to go to a two-year school? Um, and all of that costs money. And so when I was looking to get in the field, I really could not afford to do any of that. And so I kind of, without even knowing that this was a way to get in, I just refused to take no for an answer. And so I applied to many different places. And I had marketing experience, and honestly, my marketing experience was from years before that. But I had office experience, so I played off of that. And I had also worked in the office at my church, which was very flexible because I had children in school and that was an ideal place to work. So I could play off that as well and get good references. But I had no law, no legal experience. I had two aunts in the field. So all that to say this, I didn't need to be certified at that point in time to break in. I did not need a certificate. I did not need a two-year degree to break in. And as I found out later, and be sure to look at my other video, I'll post it above about re the, the times I removed education, the higher education from my resume, um, and why. Being certified can be something you do after you get your foot in the door. It doesn't make it easier to get in. That's a mistaken notion. Attorneys won't look at that certification for a person who has no legal law office experience and say, oh my gosh, they're certified. Let's hire that person. They're not going to do that. First of all, they're going to equate higher education with more money. So what are the requirements? The requirements, it would be great if you had office experience. Yes, it would be. And is it totally necessary? No, but it, you, have to, you have to be able to type. You have to be able to file documents, you know, with, in the filing system. You have to not be afraid of computers because, to be honest, the, the attorney's going to rely on you. The, most of the attorneys, unless they're very young and just out of law school, maybe five, six years, they're not necessarily computer literate or, or very knowledgeable past, you know, just the basics. So you have to be better at the computer than your attorney. You have to solve those problems. Um, you can't get away with saying, I'm, oh, I'm just computer literate. I'm, I'm computer illiterate. I've heard people say that. That's not acceptable. So what are the requirements? It would be great if you had office experience, but if you're a computer person and you can type and you can alphabetize in order to file, you can break in to this field. And it doesn't take, certification doesn't pave the way. You know, being certified or having a certificate or the two year degree. Remember, when you hear this stuff, where's it coming from? Who's saying that you have to have this? When you do research online, where are you finding that? And who's touting this? So I'm telling you as a paralegal veteran who's worked with many, many attorneys and people that so many of us broke in without any of that. If that's what's stopping you from breaking in, don't let it. But you do have to have what I call the foundational skills, your Microsoft Word 
being able to file docs by the alphabet. Um, organizational skills where you are going to be very organized at work. Even if you don't like to do that at home, just like me, you have to make a choice that that's how you'll be at work. That your work ethic is strong. That you have a can-do attitude and you will get the job done and you will not make any excuses and you won't be coming into work late you will be there 15 20 minutes ahead of time if possible and you will have that type of you know focus and that you are teachable that you're not a know-it-all and many attorneys many attorneys have said to me I could take somebody who has no legal experience and I could train them and it wouldn't be like People who are experienced, and attorneys have said this to me, when they come in and they have experience, they kind of sometimes are stick in the muds. They are stuck. They do not want to learn anything new. And seriously, and it's their way or the highway. That's why they say that about a new person who has no legal experience. So don't think that's a weakness. Think of it as a positive, all right? And if it's scary to do that, you really have to look at the other side of it. It's scary to go in without experience, but what if you spend all that money and you still can't get in? Because attorneys look at that, those higher degrees, and they think you want more money. And I wasn't getting called until I did what, and look at that video I'm going to post above. And you'll understand more as to why. So you have to not be a gossip monger. If you get off on, on the dark side in an office, don't go into law because you won't last long. You have to be able to keep a confidence. That means keep a secret. Anything you hear or you learn in the law office that's confidential, you don't tell your family. You keep that to yourself. So um, that's pretty much it except one more thing. Look at the videos, I'll post one of them up on the right, that all the videos that I have posted so far about the different types of paralegals. Do any of those light your fire? And I'll post more, but people will tend not to look at those things, at those types of videos. But those are the very videos you should be looking at. What area of law do you think you'd like to work in? When you look at the ads, what are the ads in your area? What type of law are those attorneys practicing? What are the duties of the type of work? You know, that, that if it's a personal injury paralegal, go look at that video that's in the grouping on YouTube. I go into detail about what a personal injury paralegal does. I was one. I was an estate planning paralegal. I worked with a mediator. You'll see those videos in this grouping on YouTube. So that's the homework. Those are the responsibilities um, of the paralegal in some of those videos. And the requirement is more simple, is simpler than you would ever imagine to get your foot in the door. Don't make it more difficult than it is. And remember to always look at who's promoting that idea. You know, and other paralegals will tell you, oh, you have to have an associate or a bachelor's. That's because after they were in the field, they got their degree in that. They didn't, most of them did not start out doing that. And if somebody sees a bachelor's on your resume and it's in the private field, sector. That means a regular law firm, not a government entity like city government or um, the courthouse, working in the courthouse as a paralegal, or um, oh, Department of Environmental Protection uses paralegals to do contract work. And I had looked at going with an attorney, one of my attorneys who moved over to that department. So in that field, they really promote getting a higher degree and getting certified through NALA, NALA. 
But in the private sector, it's completely different. So what an opportunity to get your foot in the door, right? Think on all this. And don't forget to check those other videos out that I told you about with more to come. It's all about becoming educated, and you can do it on your own. So have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to come over and see me on Paralegal Coffee Talk. It's a place where people looking at maybe this is the career for them visit and also some veteran paralegals come in to visit but it's mainly people who are thinking about this career or paralegal students so don't be shy come on over like my page over there and um, look at some of the videos I go live on Facebook uh, at least two to three times a week and then paralegal um, oh the paralegal podcast on cast now LeslieSansoneWilliams.com and if you're not watching this on YouTube head on over to LeslieWilliams126 and check out all the other videos we're going to be pushing 60 videos now as I do this one so come on over alright take care have a good day and I'll see you in the next video